Hey friends, welcome back to The Chris Shah Show, where every Sunday I talk about business and technology news that I'm following and I think you should know. Before we jump into it, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's kick things off with the most important news this week, and that is Facebook unfriending Australian news. On Thursday, the 18th of February, Facebook decided to do a Thanos snap and wipe out all Australian news on Facebook. The Facebook pages of news organizations such as ABC and the Sydney Morning Herald all show a blank feed on Facebook. There's no posts available for viewers to read. Even overseas news sites such as Wall Street Journal and New York Times have an empty Facebook page. Lifestyle sites such as BuzzFeed and Broadsheet Sydney have also suffered the same fate. Alarmingly, government Facebook pages for the Bureau of Meteorology and Queensland Health were also impacted by this situation. They now fortunately have been restored. Australian Facebook users can no longer share or post news articles on their Facebook page. They also can't share it to Facebook groups or even directly to their Facebook friends. In order to understand how we got into this whole situation, we have to go back in time and look at what's happened to the newspaper industry over the last few years. Back in 2003, the daily metropolitan newspaper circulation sat at 2.4 million, which isn't too bad for a country that only had a population of 19.9 million back then. Fast forward to today, that circulation is sitting at a low of 800,000. This sharp decline in readership has also resulted in a sharp decline in revenue and profits for the newspaper companies. Now, this doesn't mean that Australians are no longer reading news. They're just changing their consumption from print to online. In fact, a Roy Morgan research showed that over 12.7 million Australians, which is 60.8%, say that the internet is their main source of news. This is up 1.4 million since 2018. The same research showed that nearly 7.9 million Australians, 37.7%, specifically nominated social media as their main source of news. With this shift in consumer behavior, we've also seen advertising revenue shift from newspapers to tech companies such as Facebook and Google. For every $100 spent in online advertising in 2019, 53% went to Google, 28% went to Facebook, and the remaining $19 went to all other websites. So the Australian government decided to step into the situation and fix it by introducing the News Media Bargaining Code, which is expected to become law in the coming days. The code essentially forces internet companies like Facebook and Google to make commercial deals with news organizations such as Seven or Channel 9. If the tech companies like Facebook and Google refuse to do so, this could lead to an arbitration process and even fines of up to 10% of their revenue. While media companies were obviously supportive of these laws because it meant a new revenue source for them, Facebook said it would actually ban all news from its platforms if there weren't enough changes made to the code. And guess what? On Thursday, they made good on that promise. So who's wrong and who's right? Well, on the one hand, you have media companies arguing that the news that they produce helps Google and Facebook make money by offering reliable, fact-checked, accurate news that Aussies are looking for on their platforms. On the other hand, you have tech companies saying that publishers are actually benefiting from all the traffic that is being sent from Facebook feed and Google search results. Facebook Australia's managing director, William Easton, stated in a blog post that last year, Facebook generated approximately 5.1 billion free referrals to Australian publishers worth an estimated $407 million. For Facebook, the business gain from news is minimal. News makes up less than 4% of the content people see in their news feed. Unlike Facebook, Google decided to play nice and made deals with news media companies, agreeing to pay both 7 and 9 news. So my key takeaway from this is that Facebook is in a tricky situation. If Facebook sticks to its guns and doesn't back down, that's going to create more backlash. Additionally, news sites will probably see a drop in traffic with smaller publishers suffering the most. This will add to the negativity and backlash that Facebook is already receiving. If Facebook relents and does sign a deal with the news media organizations in Australia, this is going to set a precedent so that every other country can copy Australia's bargaining code and then they can also demand payments from the tech companies. In overseas news, we have Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway revealing stock purchases in Chevron and Verizon. The investment company also reduced its position in Apple. 
Buffett's investment in Chevron was valued at nearly $4.1 billion at the end of 2020, while its stake in Verizon came in at $8.6 billion. Buffett's reduced position in Apple is still worth a massive $120 billion, and it's Berkshire's single biggest stock holding. My key takeaway from this is that even though more and more companies are divesting away from fossil fuels, Warren Buffett is first and foremost a value investor, and he obviously sees a lot of value in Chevron. Amazon has purchased a company called Sales. It's a direct competitor to Shopify and helps small businesses set up online stores. The Aussie company was purchased by Amazon on the 15th of January and it wasn't publicized by Amazon. In a blog post, the CEO and founder Martin Rush announced that we have signed an agreement to be acquired by Amazon and are looking forward to working with them as we continue to build easy to use tools for entrepreneurs. Nothing is changing for our customers at this time and we'll be in touch with customers as and when we have future updates. The company was founded in 2013 and provides small and medium businesses the tools to launch their online stores, add online payment methods to existing websites, and even help with digital marketing. My key takeaway from this is that Amazon obviously recognizes Shopify as a serious threat and buying sales is a way to compete. The Australian share trading market is heating up with UK broker Free Trade looking to launch here shortly. The fintech company will be setting up shop in Brisbane and they told the AFR that they chose Australia because of the engineering talent available as well as Australia's proximity to South Asia. Share trading platforms have enjoyed strong user growth in 2020, partly thanks to the pandemic. The Commonwealth Bank of Australia announced last week that they saw more than 230,000 new accounts in their online trading platform Comsec as well as their new investing app Pocket. While US trading platform Stake has now hit 300,000 customers, which is up from 100,000 back in June. My key takeaway from this is that investing apps will continue to see strong user growth as more and more retail investors jump into the market. And in this week's crypto corner, Apple Pay can now be used to spend Bitcoin. Bitcoin wallet company, BitPay announced that its prepaid MasterCard users in the US can now add their card to Apple Wallet and Apple Pay will now allow Bitcoin to be spent online, in stores and in apps. BitPay also announced plans to add support for Google Pay and Samsung Pay by the end of March. My key takeaway from this is that slowly but surely, Bitcoin's adoption in society will continue to increase. Also, Bitcoin broke the 50,000 US dollar price barrier for the first time. And to think one year ago, Bitcoin was sitting at 10,000 US dollars. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe for a new video every Sunday where I discuss technology and business news that I'm following and I think you should know. As always, an important disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. This video and my channel is for general information only. As with anything in life, you should do your own due diligence and seek independent advice.